just to get things started, uh, Steelheart or Red Alert was a band for like almost a decade before you got signed. Is that right? Oh, yeah. 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 It was, it was pathetic. Okay. Yeah. Well, yeah. So it was crazy because Steelheart, we, I mean, uh, it was, it was like painstaking, man. We were, uh, we were in the studio rehearsing like for centuries, you know yeah. what I mean? And trying to get signed. And then we'd have these, some of these showcases and these hot shots would show, show up. And um, so anyway, and we would do these like, um uh little showcases and i remember i'll never forget i forgot who it was was it uh warner brothers or somebody came down and this hot shot cocky hot shot and our guy was like oh you guys need to oh you're you need to develop more you need to do this i'm like um man fuck you you know straight up and it wasn't literally I swear it wasn't literally a month later until I met my manager in LA and we were signed to MCA universal literally a month and a half after that. Yeah. So it's like, you know, it just goes to show you that people, uh, you know, they all, everyone has opinions or they just miss out on opportunities, you know, when they don't see it, but the band was together for literally, we were rehearsing for about, yeah about to 10 years i mean it was like crazy i mean it was just we're sitting there going really i mean we're watching the, you know the 80s slowly drift by and it's like and finally it's like you know towards the tail end we caught it i mean could you imagine if steelheart caught it at 19 like 86 right or something you know what i mean 85 yeah. i mean i think i feel i feel the band would be a lot bigger than it is now you know For- yeah. But um, but it is what it is. It's life, you know, yep. and we move forward. So you're about six or seven years older than me, so I can't really speak too well about this, but uh, Connecticut doesn't seem to be a hotbed of music, um, a music community. I, I lived in, when I was in elementary school, I lived in New Canaan. So I'm, oh, I have okay. some, some vague memories of Connecticut, but not really, uh, you know, we moved when I was 11. So I remember bits and I remember like Bradley's and Caldor's uh, shopping Places yeah. and, well, um, New Can New Can is a really nice place. You know, New Can yeah. is a, it's a beautiful place for raising families, and it's just a really posh area. You know, New Can and uh, Greenwich, uh, Stanford. You know, they're all really posh areas where a lot of very wealthy people live, and CEOs from New York they go to work to New York. You know, so and it, it's a short commute, but uh, no, it's not for musicians. Um, interestingly enough that we came out of there you know yeah. the only other so. band i remember hearing about from connecticut um was liege liege lord liege lord liege lord, liege lord. Yeah. yeah they're all bros yeah we, i mean i know those guys and then and also what was the other one um uh where we snagged frank out of the band the rhythm guitar player uh, uh angels uh what is it it's something of angels um, I forgot the name of the band, yeah. but it was my, they're, they were all friends. And actually I stole John, the drummer, and I stole Frank out of that band. I was like, you know what? You guys come with us. <laughs> nice. So were you just yeah. rehearsing or were you playing shows? We were rehearsing, we were writing, you know, yeah. we were writing and we were um, doing some shows here and there, like some clubs, you know, it's just, there's just nowhere to play, you know? Right. I mean, I remember we played one, we played at a strip club I mean, down in Stanford. What's it called? Uh, you, you know what I'm talking about? No, I was, I was a, way too young at that oh, time. <laughs> okay. well, anyway, but there's a strip club in Stanford. And it's like, I remember Red Alert. There's actually, I think there's some live videos on YouTube wow. that you can see. I was playing at a strip club. I mean, you gotta yeah. be kidding me. You know what I mean? Yeah. But it is what it is. So, so you, you, move to LA and, and then get signed or you got signed and then moved to LA? Um, got signed and moved to LA. So what, what the way it happened was um, back in, um, well, w- one day I just got completely pissed off and we had this demo tape of four songs. And I said, you know what? That's it. I'm done. I'm out of, I'm going to, I'm going to California to become a star. And literally I'm having dinner with my uh, parents one night and um and my father had really broken English like this. And he said, so what are you doing with your life? You know, what are you doing? And I said, you know, Friday, I'm going to L.A., to Hollywood, to become a star. And he goes, do it. Do it. 
don't talk about it, do it. I was like, I'm doing it, it's happening. And crazy enough, we went to LA and uh, me, uh, my friend John, who became later my tour manager and Jimmy. And, um, and I was meeting this, uh, this other drummer that we were testing out. And um, he was, uh, um, and he said, he goes, hey, there's, there's this big manager that's gonna be at, a, at this big producer's house that I know, you should meet them. So like, great, absolutely. So that was my main focus going there, you know? So I went up to this, um, to the guy's apartment, this producer guy, and I played him Angel Eyes. As soon as he heard Angel Eyes, it was like, mm, maybe we should change this. Yeah, it sounds pretty good. Maybe if we cut this, he goes, and then I say, he goes, no, it's finished, isn't it? I go, yeah, it's done. Then he listens to another song. Wow, this is done too, isn't it? And then there's another one. He goes, this is just, this, this doesn't need a producer. This is finished. I go, yeah. You know, and um, so then Stan comes up, this manager, tan, gold chain, you know, uh, nice Jewish man from the Upper East Side, you know. Yeah. And and um, you know, I forgot the producer's name. He, he was the guy who did uh, Sheriff and some other big bands. Yeah. I forgot his name. Anyway, long story short, he goes, uh, hey, Stan, you should really listen to this, this kid's demo. And he goes, you ready? I can't listen to anything anymore. I got too much. I got too many fans. I can't do it. I got. I, I just can't do it. You look great. I'm sure you sound great. I just can't do it. And he, he goes, and you really need to listen to this. And he goes, okay, I'll tell you what. Here's my address in New York, my office. Send me the tape, and I'll have a listen. I was like, great. And this was on a Monday. I, and he's leaving that afternoon back to New York. I immediately, as soon as I left, left the meeting there, I went right to FedEx and I FedEx the tape, right? Yeah. And I FedEx it. So he came to New York to his office tomorrow, like Tuesday, and there was the tape. You know, I didn't even get home yet. You know, yeah. I was in flight and he <laughs> leaves a message up. He leaves a message on my phone. He didn't even get halfway through the song. Okay. He was on the second chorus. He goes, you fucking prick. You're right. It's that good. Call me. We need to talk. <laughs> Went into New York on Thursday for a meeting with him. We had a verbal agreement. He called me Friday afternoon. He goes, you ready? You're on MCA Universal Records. That's it. It's over. You're good. You're done. Have a good weekend. Boom. <laughs> and it literally like that. Yeah. So, you know, when you know when people it, it's true no one knows what it takes for an artist to become famous right. or to become when it's their time they think that it's overnight it is overnight but it's years of preparation and work before yeah. that so were you guys i mean it sounds like you were fully prepared was the rest of the band really like that, ha yeah, that happened we were, so we were so rehearsed we were so rehearsed yeah. so so like we went into, when we flew out to LA to record the album, Mark Opitz, uh, who was a producer, who I love, by the way, he was fantastic. And I just, I just found out he passed away. And I, it, it blew my mind because I spoke to him not long ago for working with him on another project. Yeah. And Mark did ACDC, In Excess, uh, uh, The Vinyls. I mean, just really talented producer. And we came in and he just said, we had we had a uh, IR, uh, SIR booked, I think, for about eight days to go through all the songs, to cut, you know, really get it worked out. We were there the first day and went through all the songs and went through the whole thing. And it's like, it's done. Yeah, there are no changes. There's, it was finished. I mean, I worked my ass off, you know, putting that record together. The demo, I mean, it needed to be recorded properly, but it was done the arrangements the vibe the energy was finished and uh we went in and we knocked that shit out man it, it came out i mean really it was just it's it was magic you yeah know? how long from the finish of that recording to actual street date do you remember yeah that was that was a tough one too because what happened we finished the album and then we we're sitting around waiting for universal to release the record and they were just i think they were just working on a lot of other projects and we were like the last thing on their mind it was really 
it was nerve wracking. You know what I mean? After all this time, and now we did this record. Now they own the record, and, and they, they just may throw it up on the shelf. You know. So what happened is that um, uh, this this uh, DJ in Japan, Masaito, who was a very influential uh, DJ at, at that time, and um, he played "She's Gone." And the first time he played "She's Gone," he had over two and a half thousand phone calls <laughs> into the station. The band blew up. I mean, literally. I went there for, um, I didn't know anything about this. My manager didn't tell me. And we, we went for a first, a preliminary for the first week, just uh, for some interviews. He goes, oh, we're just going to go there for interviews to do some press, get some going. Well, when I stepped off the plane, I mean, it was like, you think Michael Jackson walked off. It was like literally hundreds of people waiting for me. I was yeah. like, what the <laughs> fuck is this? You know, I wasn't ready for that. I was like, whoa it totally freaked me out you know and um did some great interviews and we were there i don't know maybe a month later with the whole band and we did our first uh, asian tour and uh the first show was nhk hall sold out all the shows sold out it was like it was uh, it was really intense because it was 10, 11 years of working your whole, in, in, in your whole life, you know, knowing you need to be there and knowing you're this person and this singer and this vibe. And, and then all of that leads up, not to a club show, it leads to like a major show, you know? And I'll never forget it because when I finished the, um, the show, which is, you can still get it on live DVD actually. Oh, wow. That's the first concert. That's your first show. That was first concert, NHK Hall, Tokyo. I um, I couldn't even walk down to my dressing room. I had to sit down at the stage with an oxygen mask on because the amount of energy that came through me, the fire, and the, uh, it was just, I don't know what happened. It was just yeah. like, okay. I got such a headache, you know, it just, it's just it, life, you know? Yeah. But, um, and then you yeah. come back, you come back to the U S and do you wind up playing like Tuesday nights in front of 10 people? No, no. Uh, we come back to the U S and then universal just goes, Oh shit. <laughs> they blew up in a, they blew up in Asia and we're not doing anything. So they're like, we better get cracking. So then they jumped on and then a, Another DJ in Salt Lake City, okay, started playing Angel Eyes. I'll never let you go. And he started playing it at midnight, you know. And people were just calling in. Who's this? What is this? We love this. We love this. There's a boom, boom. Little by little, it got to the day, day, day. And another station picked it up. Another station picked another. And it just went, you know, just exploded. And, uh, and then we did that video. And the video went to number two i believe on mtv that was a big deal and sure. uh you know it just grew from there yeah i mean I, the mtv and metal edge magazine were where i learned about everything right right and that yeah. was that, that was amazing then you know that's cool I, I i cannot believe that netflix doesn't do videos they right. should do videos they should do music videos yeah for without sure. a doubt Actually, I'm going to, I'm going to, uh, actually, I'm going to present this music video that I just did for trust and love. Yeah. Have you seen it? Yes. It, you, you, I, yeah. I, well, I've seen, you've done, you've done multiple versions of it, right? Like I, I've seen the, uh, the um, English speaking version, but you've done in different languages. Yeah. And... Well, there's, there's two videos. There's the English video and then there's the Korean version video. Okay. Okay. But I sang it in 10 languages. Okay. So we're going to release the rest of them now we're, we're just preparing we got we're just organizing we're promoting the english version right. and then we'll put out the chinese probably is next and then um or the italian you know the italian portuguese spanish hindi uh japanese russian i did do it in russian um they could use they could use this song too you know For sure 
for sure. Um, Chinese, English, uh, Korean, and uh, what did I miss? Um, I don't know. And I still have to finish uh, French, German, and um, I'd like to do Arabic. Yeah. So I'll just keep going. Doesn't matter. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. So, so do you remember? Um, like that picture that I showed you, I don't remember who you were on tour with. You, you toured pretty extensively after the first record. Were they headlining dates or were they opening dates or a combination of the two? It was a combination. I think I think when we saw you was either we did a tour with Lynch Mob yep. or with or with uh, Great White. It was Lynch Mob because I, sure. I have other pictures that are all, I'm wearing the same thing. So it had to have been Lynch Mob. Yeah. Right, right, right. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So Lynch Mob was, um, what do you call it? That was a great tour. Man, yeah. I had a good time with that. That was so much fun. Yeah. When you moved out to LA, when this all was blowing up, who, who did you consider certain bands to be your your peers, contemporaries? I mean, there was a whole, you know, that whole genre of music. There was everything from, uh, um, I don't know, from just from a popularity level, like Trickster to Def Leppard and everything in between, right? Not, not that Trickster wasn't that popular, but. Um, were there certain bands that you found yourself gravitating to as friends or as fans or, or that kind of thing? Um, you know, I, I was friends a little bit for a little while with, um, yeah, with, um, uh, Eddie Van Halen, you know, we hung out quite a bit, but that was later. Actually, that was later, not during yeah. the eighties. Um, but, um, no, I was really to myself, you know, I was, I was, yeah. and I'm still am. It's like crazy. I'm like, I'm this, Last night I had a, a really nice meeting with a famous producer. I'm going to work a bit on some stuff. And, and he's naming all these names. I'm going, <laughs> and it's like, sorry, man. The reason I have all these songs is because I'm in, I'm in the hole, you know, yeah. you know, working all the time, you know, creating music. And, and um, I, I, I feel, you know, being too social, it takes a lot out of me. Yeah. You know, going out and you got to go out and you got to party and you got to just like, uh, it's too much. I don't get anything done, you know. So um, I've never been one of those kind of guys, but I do, you know, I never really hung out with all the rock stars. Yeah. I know them. I know them, you know. Um, so I'm obviously, I'm not a musician, uh, so I don't know this, but, but, um, when you were starting out, were you, were you looking into the future? Were you thinking, I better save some of this money that I'm making. I better think about where I'm going to be 10 years or was it live fast every day and, and see what happens? You know, in this business, you can try to do whatever you can, but it will always spin you, you know? Um, how can I say this? Uh, well, look, I mean, here I am. We're, we're, jam and we're touring the world where i mean we're at the top of the world bosses things fucking cars whatever everything and then what one night denver arena boom the lighting truss falls on your head okay and what happens you lose everything you know right. overnight i mean it felt like overnight i was sleeping on a futon i'm like what the what what is this you know overnight boom but i think you know for my journey that wasn't just a, it was more of a building process, I feel, you know, I lost all my money, I lost everything, my, my family, and, and, and it's not because of drugs, because I never was into drugs, I never was into the alcohol, you know, of course, I'll get a buzz on, but I'll never, you'll never see me drunk. Sure. You know, I was always, always took care of myself, you know, never smoked. Now I'd love a cigar and a scotch <laughs> once in a while, but I got it in moderation sure and um yeah man and um it just uh, I, I feel like for me it felt like i needed more i didn't feel like i just didn't feel like being where i was with steelheart that time was enough it felt like because i was on the bus coming going to colorado and i'll never forget it just thinking i'm going I'm seeing everybody's on the bus. They're all wasted. And this has happened to chicks. And it's just like, is this it? This is, this is the big time. This is it. I'm like, I need more. I got to do something great. I got to do something more music, but I got to do something better. And um, that's when the accident happened the next night. Oh, wow. You know, and, um, and I feel, I feel it built me to another level of, 
information that I received and just the man and the, the will and the belief in myself to keep going, you know, I feel I just didn't do it for myself. I felt like I did it for, I had to do it even to help other people believe in themselves and to keep going that it can happen, you know? Yeah. Yeah. You know, I will say this, if I ever show up at the, the Grammy podium, <laughs> and, you know, the first thing I would say, don't try to sit home <laughs> because this is <laughs> insane. Yeah. Yeah. So, so, um, after the accident, I mean, that essentially ended Steelheart, right? Yeah, that, that, that was it. I was, it was, that, it was that I was in bed for seven months. I couldn't blink, you know, cause it had injury and, and I just didn't feel the vibe from the band. I really didn't feel the love. It was just kind of weird, you know? And I was like, you know, I'm done enough of this, you know? Yeah. And I think it's time for me to go solo. And, um, and it was that was it was a it was a shock to everybody, it kind of like freaked everybody out. It, it, and I understand, but I, you know, being sick, being in, in you know, laid out like that, I, I just felt like I would I, I would have liked a little more from the guys. You know sure. what I mean? And it just didn't get it. So, you know, but that snowballed. You know, everything for me too. I mean, it just snowballed down worse and worse and worse. I don't know why, but I just, everything just went, every time I took one step forward, I went three steps back, you know, and I had to keep going and then, um, made the weight record. Great record. That's what the song we all die young is on, mm-hmm. which we're going to be re-releasing now for the 30th. And, um, you know, great record. And in the middle of the record, the, uh, my, my best buddy, the vice president of Universal, just said, hey, I'm leaving the company. Uh, you know what that does to an artist? Yeah. You know, it's like, it. and then, uh, you know, another guy picks up and sure enough, they drop the band, you know, and it was, uh, you know, that was tough. So then it was like starting from scratch again, you know, rebuilding and, and out of nowhere, I, I did uh, some big shows, but then I went and did um, the movie Rockstar. Right. You know, Tom Worman called me out of the blue one day and he goes, hey, uh, what are you doing? And I was like, I'm in Connecticut. I'm going, coming back to L.A. tomorrow and I'm going to put a band together. I got to get my shit together. And he goes, well, you know, let me know. I'm doing this movie, this pretty big movie, and there's going to be some heavy hitters on it. I was thinking maybe you want to audition because they need a really good singer to do Mark's parts. And uh, would you want to audition? I go, sure. I flew in at 1130. I was in a studio at two, three o'clock. I finished singing three 30 to call me. You got the gig. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Boom. And here we go again. Yeah. You know? Yeah. So. Did, because of the accident, because of the time that you were recovering, uh, were you even aware of the world around you and like the grunge and Nirvana and that stuff or so, semi, I learned how to learn it all after more or yeah. less. I'm telling you, I was, I was, in such a fog and, and, um, you know, I didn't know all the grunge was happening. i liked some of it. Didn't like all of it, honestly, you know? Um, but, um, uh, but I, I was definitely, I was in a fog. I lost memory. I, I yeah. mean, I was just, it took me years to, you know, come back and wake up, yeah. you know? So, um, yeah. So did, did Rockstar bring back Steelheart fans or did you find new fans because of that people connecting and, and. Well, a little bit of both because I wasn't allowed to talk about it. Yeah. And, you know, I'm not quite sure if I still am, but <laughs> I really don't, you know, every, everybody knows. Yeah. So it's not like, it's not like I'm telling them it's all over Wikipedia. It's everywhere. Sure. Um, but uh, yeah, I wasn't allowed to talk about it. Okay. So that really sucked. Oh I'll yeah. Tell you. you know, I mean, being at the forum and watching Mark sing and hey, we all die. Yeah. And I'm sitting there going, <laughs> mm. and the audience is losing their shit, you know? Yeah. But, you know, hey, that's the movies. Yeah. You know what oh, I mean? Yeah. 
and we have to, you know, it's all about the sale and the vibe and the mystique. But on a good note, the band Steel Dragon. So we were using my song "We All Die Young," yeah. and that was going to single, and they made a video for it, and it was going to uh, radio, and they put a ton of promotion behind it. They were, I really feel it would have been, it may have actually been a number one song. It could have been a number one, you know? And um, then 9-11 happened. So the first week it went out, it was number two in the box office. And that week the song is being, is going out on like a Wednesday. It's going to be all over radio. On Tuesday, I think Tuesday, 9-11 happened. And then George Bush said, nothing with blood, nothing would die, nothing on the radio. Here kill the song, again, right? <laughs> kill the move, kill the song, kill the move. Here I go again. Boom. Four steps back. You know what I mean? Yeah. So not only that, I didn't get any promotion out of it. I didn't get the song out there, you know? It was like, fuck me. You know, but um, hey, again, what do you do? You put an H on a handle or keep going or, or go home. Yeah. What do you want to do? You know? Yeah. So the one thing that really, um, you stood apart. I mean, I mean, your vocals are just, I, I'm, I, you know, blew my voice out in my car many times trying to sing along and not even getting anywhere right. close. Um, I saw the Eagles last night and the Eagles don't sing very high. And so they've been able, like, they still sound the same 40 years later, but when, when you were making the first record and I'll never let you go, did you ever imagine that, what was that 30 years ago that you'd still be singing that song and having to hit those notes? Or were you just like a kid and just like, I'm just going to go for it all now, never thinking that yeah. here we'd be. And you'd have to replicate that 30 years later. Um, well, I, I kind of did. I kind of, I, I always did, but I didn't think of it at that time also, you know, but um you know, it was like, um, what's his name from ACDC, um, the singer? Oh, my brain just stopped. Um, Brian Johnson uh, or Don Scott? Brian, uh, Brian Johnson. Yeah. He said he was on the interview. He goes, he goes, oh, man, fuck. He goes, I'm singing. I'm singing. It's like, I didn't think I had to do this now <laughs> at this age. <laughs> he goes, there's a lot of work, you know. And, you know, it's it, it, with me. The more I sing, the easier it gets. Really? Yeah. If I could sing every day, and I try to rehearse a lot, even by myself, I hate rehearsing by myself, one of first and foremost. And I have so much shit going on all, all day that, you know, building Sea Heart Records, building my the promotion, doing this, making videos. And this. So it takes a lot of energy not just singing you know but if i can just go back to waking up every day cup of coffee and playing piano you know at the in the morning do my exercise and go and rehearse and sing oh it just it's it's a risk it's, it's like it's a it's something that is always there you got to respect it you can't abuse it and if you keep working it and as you get older i mean of course you got to shift a little bit differently you know you got to find different ways to how you're going to hit these notes and how is it, your voice going to open you know what i mean so and it's always that's just life you know it's yeah. just what it is so i was watching some youtube clips and i and i love you sort of you sort of pause before you hit that final note when you play live and I'm sure like the whole oh. crowd is like, is he going to do it? Is he going to do it? Is he going to do it? And then, uh, and then yeah. you deliver on it, which is, uh, <laughs> yeah, they all, yeah. I mean, they used to have bets in, in the bathroom. <laughs> um, is he going to do it? He's going to do this. The, the, um, the, uh, the tour that we did with great way, I think it was, it was a really fun tour. Every single night, the band would be up on stage or on the balcony or whatever going, He did it again. <laughs> Were there any nights that you didn't yeah. that you didn't hit it? No, of course. No, I said I did hit. Of course I hit. No, 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 never. Never. Yeah. Never. God's got <laughs> and I, I thank you. Thank you. And you know, it's all about energy and it's all about rehearsing. Yeah. Listen, I, I rehearse like 
the one thing I can't stand is like when we do these spot dates, I hate it because you get in there, you work, you warm up, you work towards it, you do this great show. And then I sit home again. It's like, then you cool down. You know what I mean? Yeah. You got to keep it up. Keep it always on that, that, you know, you got to keep the chops up. Yeah. And then it gets easier. It gets easier for me. So I do want to touch on, you came out of the nineties and did like, I was reading, you got into like Korean television in the two thousands. Was that, is that right? Oh yeah. And I did a lot of work in Korea. Um, so she's gone is still the number one karaoke song since 1989 today. Wow. And that is one of those things. If you can sing it as a male, <laughs> you're probably getting laid. <laughs> right? I mean, I know it's crazy, but it's true. Yeah. And it is um, very popular. I did um, uh, several um, scores for um, songs for uh, TV series and movies over there. Uh, I sang in Korean. I did um, the King of Mass Singers, which they brought here uh, now. That started in Korea, and I was the first international artist ever to do it in Korea. Mm. And I sang in Korean. I sang two songs in Korean and one in English. And I couldn't actually win because I needed to know one more Korean song. I couldn't learn three Korean (laughs) songs in a month and a half. I mean, the enunciation and to, you know, to do it to do it to a point where people can't tell if you're you know a uh, a foreigner right right so anyway so korea has been a big um a big um uh how would i say um beautiful space for steelheart you know the people accepted uh the korean people accepted uh the band the, the music me and um and that's what led me to uh, I, I wrote originally the song trust and love for the korean peninsula to put them together because i think it's crazy that they're uh, they are apart i think um you know watching news and watching the the, the trafficking the, the children's trafficking it, it's just ludicrous for me right and you know and the constant anger and the threats it is just doesn't make sense so and not only that i just feel like if they can come together i feel like the world will come together they have to hold some sort of a really big power you know for sure it's such a fight if that can be put together i I feel the rest of the world will be like okay whoa if they can do this we can do this however as i'm writing the song you know the song got bigger and bigger and i'm like going whoa this is this is this is a world world song where I originally in my mind I was thinking of the world as well, right? And um, and it developed into like I hope it catches as a world anthem because yeah. that's what I would love it to be, and that was my gift. I mean i I paid for the video, I paid for the production. I mean, I pay for everything, sure. all my shit. It's ludicrous. I mean, I'll be at Seven Eleven soon, but you know, <laughs> right. This is what I'm talking about. You save the money and then what happens? Oh, let me write a w- song for the world. Okay. It needs <laughs> a video. Get... It needs promotion. It needs. It's, it's insane. Cause if yeah. you make, you know, you make a video and no one knows about it. What's the, what difference is that? You know? Yeah. So, so I was uh, perusing the Wikipedia page and I did not know that you, you did some stuff with the doors. I was the front man for the doors for two major tours. Wow. I, I also wrote some songs with Robbie. Yeah. And uh, actually, yesterday I had a meeting for this movie that's being made in September. Um, they want to use Trust and Love. They want to, I'll be in the movie as an oh, actor. Wow. And and, uh, and they want to use one of the songs that uh, Robbie and I wrote. That's so great. who knows? Anything can happen. Yeah. Maybe I'm on the upswing now. Maybe it'll <laughs> stay. Maybe it'll keep going. <laughs> no more, yeah, no yeah, more yeah. downs. Yeah, you know? had you had had you considered or had you had offers or anything else to join other bands in the in the last 10, 20 years? I did absolutely, and um, I turned down. Uh, I don't know if I should name any names, but I turned two major after the Doors. After the Doors, there was another two other bands asked me to join, and 
I just, it just, they were famous, but not like the doors. Sure. You know, I, I was in a space, I'm, I'm in a space like, well, why would I want to join that and build your band? Why wouldn't I just build Steelheart? Right. You know what I mean? And, and who knows, maybe I should have went for one of them for a while and then went back to the art. You know what I mean? Yeah. I don't know. Uh, but at that time it didn't feel right, you yeah. know, but, um, I did, I did work with, um, uh, slash with velvet revolver. I did like four songs. We did demos with them. Oh, wow. Um, and then Scott jumped in and as it was like, all right, then, okay. That was, uh, what do you call it? Uh, of course he had a bigger name. So sure. Yeah. Yeah. But I sang the shit out of it. No way fans of but no way fans of butts. Yeah. The same I'm sure. thing happened with it with STP. I mean, I did three songs and it sounds fucking great. Yeah. I mean, like legit. <laughs> I I don't know. Yeah. You know? Yeah. But um I so, was I was I was felt I should have been in Van Halen, honestly. And I met with Eddie and I hung out with Eddie like a lot. Yeah. You know, we got some stories and, um, but I think, uh, you know, him going with, uh, Dave on that last tours was the right move. Yeah. You know, and yeah. I kind of, I kind of pushed that too, actually. <laughs> yeah. I don't. So, so, uh, so what do you, what do you have, uh, what are the plans for Steelheart coming up? I know you were talking about one-off dates and I know that you're playing in Ohio, uh, with winger on a one-off date. Um, but, but are you hoping to get back more, more out on the road? Or are you going to write and record new music? What is, what is, no, no, it's, it's right now, right now the main focus is this. I have two songs to finish one and a half. So, so the Seahawk 30th, you know, was supposed to be last year, but Hey, you know, uh, just a lot of come up pandemic. I'm doing, I'm directing videos and I'm just all those dancers. <laughs> I mean, it's yeah, like, yeah you know, bells and whistles, all kinds of shit going on. Just not enough hours in a day. But um, I have recorded uh, She's Gone with just vocals, piano, and a 40-piece orchestra. Wow. And Mama Don't You Cry, a vocals, piano, 40-piece orchestra. We did uh, Trust and Love with the 40-piece as well. And then um, uh, we did Everybody Loves Eileen, full band, rock and you know like almost like the original a little different yeah and then we did um and i'll never let you go angel eyes as a duet oh wow it's just acoustic guitar and vocals and i need to it's close i'm really close to finishing those two songs i'm trying to finish it by the end of april um but i was just asked to sing something for um trafficking against trafficking as well singing a um uh, another song for another album for a big producer so yeah you know it's, things just come in all the time and, and that's what's happening there as far as performances absolutely we want we're doing live shows uh looks like asia starting to open up now we got some offers and um i'm maybe going to europe as well so the idea is to perform and to promote trust and love right and then the steelheart 30th album yeah that's the key this year no more writing do not let me get into the studio <laughs> right anymore i'm not allowed okay there's yeah, too yeah. many songs <laughs> you know so with see, with this touring 30 years later are there are there bands now that you you find yourself playing these one-off dates with um like i said you're playing with winger here i don't know if winger is a regular tour partner of yours or if you're playing with slaughter yeah, or we, great white yeah we do yeah we do several shows with uh winger we do slaughter we do uh, we'll do shows with Warrant. We'll do shows with Firehouse. Um, who else? Uh, that's been kind of our, you yeah. know, those things. And then the big festivals, yeah. you know, that we do all yeah. over the world. So, Going back real quick to the, you know, you said getting like having time off between shows and whatever. You, you're touring now. Um, you're probably doing, what are you doing like? seven eight songs something like that is that what a set list looks like now no it's it, it comes about it comes about 10 songs okay you okay. know we, we do we try to squeeze in depends if we have an hour if we're headlining we'll do you know we'll do 12 13 okay. 14 whatever but um if we're um, 
you know, we're opening. It's uh, we come in, we come in fucking hard and we yeah. have fun and we blow out, you know, it's like, all right, well, knock yourself out. Whoever's up next. Yeah. You know? Yeah. So. Awesome. Well, I think, uh, I think I've, I've gotten enough out of you from the nineties and the current time and, and future, hopefully. So uh, anything else you want to throw in? Uh, you know, I just, I would like to throw in, you know, if you can check on, on the Steelhearts, uh, Facebook, Instagram, face and steelheart.com, you know, I started this little uh, movement with little kids and it's growing and it's basically what they're doing is they're holding a candle. Somebody hands them a candle and they're yeah. singing part of the trust and love. And then they give it back to somebody else. And, and they say, I'm sharing my love across the world. And they grab the, you know, grab the candle. And I'm trying to, it's, it's, uh, you know, the song song is so is meant to raise the vibration and the understanding to a new level of life where I feel we are. I feel we're all in it. We're all elevating our minds in a new level of vibration of understanding. However, some of us are not really wanting to go there or fighting like Mr. Putin, you know, and, um, and that is, that is the message, you know, and I'm trying to just create an awareness. And this is my gift to the world, you know, the song and this, and we're going to connect with an organization and see how we can donate, you know, properly, see how we can build this. So it's going to take a minute, but I need help. I need help from, you know, like you and, yeah. and other people that believe in it. People need to believe in it also. It's, um, it's genuine. It's not fake. It's, um, it's from the heart. And what I'm saying is uh, pretty important. And I hope it catches on and people really feel the, um, the energy of it, you know? Yeah, absolutely. Well, I think you have a good start and I hope that it continues to grow for you. Um, I, I am old enough to realize that I'm never going to hit anywhere close to the note. So I'm not even going to try anymore when I sing along in my car, but I still, you know, I have the CD and no, go, got, go, man. Never got, stop. Got never. the vinyl. So, uh, yeah, I'm all in. So, um, thank you. I, I think that's all I've got for you. So I appreciate you taking the well, time to do this and, um, uh, maybe I'll see you when you're in Columbus later this summer. My pleasure. I look All forward. Right. Yes, yeah, please come up and just you know connect with my tour manager. I'd love to say hello. Absolutely. All right. All right. Thanks so much. Okay. All right. Bye bye. Bye bye.